How about we begin today's video with a question? Where do you live? I want you to think about the general living area that you're in, your environment. Do you live out in the country where you have no real neighbors? Perhaps you live in the city or one of the big cities of the world where there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people around. Perhaps you're one of those people who live in a really small town. There's no wrong answer. But just like how big cities can have negative perceptions, there are those who look at certain small towns and wonder, well, if something's actually wrong with them. So here now are 20 strangest small towns that you didn't know existed. Number 20. Githorn, Netherlands now, one thing that I want to make clear right off the bat is that I'm not singling out one country or a handful of them to pick on small towns that they have. But instead, we're going to go on a world tour today and show you how strangeness can be worldwide in nature. And our first stop just so happens to be the Netherlands, which I will admit is not a place that you would immediately associate with strangeness. So what is it that makes it strange? Well, you could argue that it looks a bit too old school and that it feels like something you would find in a fairy tale story or perhaps a picture book about what the Netherlands is like. The houses are all the same in styling and there are no direct roads in certain parts of the city. And yet there are plenty of bridges that are all around this small town. Oh, and there are a lot of canals that you can push a boat through. In fact, that's just part of how you're meant to get around the town. It also doesn't help that there are not many residents there. When you add all of these factors together, you can guess why people are just a bit weirded out by it all. And yet, that only has brought in more tourists to the location. Despite not it being in the most modern of places out there, people have flocked to this location over the last decade to check it out and see what it's like for themselves. It's become one of the top tourist destinations in the entire country, in fact. And this is something that is also quite worldly about places like this. If enough people get to talking about it and create certain myths and such, people will want to go there to see whether or not they're true. For example, remember the roads that I mentioned? There was one legend that there were no roads in or out of the place, which is only partly true, but people do love a good gossip. And this place is only 90 minutes away from Amsterdam if you're interested in going there for yourself. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. And now it's time for the fancy topic. For today's fancy topic, I want you to not freak out because I'm not going to show you some totally CGI'd picture in order to wax poetic for a while about some fake small town. Instead, I'm showing you this picture, which is a totally believable small town that is said to be somewhere in China. As you can see, they have secluded themselves away from the rest of the country by building their homes literally into the mountainside. There are even layers of houses that go right up to the flat parts of the summit, and if you look closely, you're going to see special staircases that help people to get up to their homes since there's not really a direct way otherwise. According to the story that was attached to the photo, people who live in this village are quite strange by nature, possibly because of how they're so secluded from the general populace. But you may be asking still, are places like this even real? Well, actually, yes, they are. Whether it's in Asia, North or South America, or possibly even other countries, there have been scores of people and cultures over the centuries and millennia who have built their homes into mountains, hills, and other places of that nature. And yes, it may be strange to some given everything we have about modern architecture, but for them, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Plus, they do things smartly by elevating their homes so that people and animals can't easily get to them unless they really want to. That's security that you can trust. While I cannot say exactly where in China this place may be located, it's more than likely a real spot, so be wary if you are to stumble upon a place like this in your travels. As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag FancyTopic and let me know your thoughts in relation to what I just showed you on the screen. Number 19. 
Nagoro, Japan. For this entry, I'm going to focus on the city of Nagoro, Japan. What makes them stand out from the rest of the country? Well, it has more to do with dolls and scarecrows. So picture this, you're driving through a riverside valley, and then you come across a small village. You see that it's busy with all kinds of people around, but when you look closer, you notice that those people, well, they're actually scarecrows, and it's full of monsters. Well, not really, but scarecrows are everywhere in Nagoro. In fact, they're built to be life-sized and placed all over the village, and currently outnumber the actual people of the place by a factor of 10 to 1. That's right, for every one person that's in Nagoro, there are 10 more scarecrows, and it's absolutely freaky. But how did it happen? The cotton-stuffed oddities are the brainchild of Sukumi Ayano, a crafts hobbyist who returned to the village in 2002 after having lived in Osaka for most of her life. Like most people, she had made the scarecrows at first to frighten the birds away from plant seeds in the area, but over time, she began to make them as a kind of memorial. You see, the population of the place, much like other places in Japan, was in serious decline, and so the scarecrows were kind of her way of creating a living memory of those who had either left or had passed on. Still though, I mean, it is kind of strange, but at least it's a bit heartwarming when you find out the story, right? Number 18. Kinu Island, Estonia Now, there are certain places in pop culture where the idea of an island that's run by or dominated by women have come up, which includes DC Comics with the Amazons. But most people would tell you that such places would be impossible today, and it just goes to show you that they don't know the beauty of context. For Kinu Island in Estonia, it is a place that is indeed dominated and ran by women. And before you wonder how it's possible, it has more to do with what the men do for work. Beginning in the 19th century, the men of the island started to go out to sea for long periods of time in order to provide for their families, which is all good and fine, because you have to do what you have to do, right? But in reverse, the women had to do what they had to do to keep the island going, along with their lives thriving. And so, while it may seem strange to some people out there, the women literally do everything on the island and they're perfectly fine with that. They're so skillful that they've even gone and made a list of all the tasks that they've done so that they can highlight how abundant that their skills are. And something that you can really love about the place is that these women don't put up with any nonsense. They're famous for calling tourists out for poking fun at their lifestyles, even though they have a very peaceful place where the lives of their children and family are put above their individual desires. And in their hierarchy, the whims of men are put last because they don't do a whole lot on the island, which sounds fair given the context. And so if you do end up going to this island, here are a few tips for you. Be kind, be respectful, and only go there if you're willing to learn about the culture and their beliefs. Because if you do, you'll be welcomed with open arms and if not, they may well make it clear that they don't have time for you and your mainland stylings. Number 17. Santa Cruz del Elote, Colombia Well, nothing strange comes out of Colombia, right? I mean, they have some of the best coffee in the world. But I'm not here to talk about the mainland of Colombia. Instead, it's about Santa Cruz de Elote, an island off the coast of Colombia that has the unique distinction of being one of the most crowded islands in the entire world, if not the absolute most crowded island. Approximately 600 people live in a two and a half acre area, making Santa Cruz del Elote one of the world's most densely populated places. But how did this place come to be? Well, the answer is that the whole island is built on the backs of coral. Fishermen set up the place in order to help do their jobs, and then eventually they just decided to reside there. And trust me when I say that island life is in full effect here, as the place has a church, a school, shops, and even a restaurant. Oh, where is... And as you make progress through the place, you're going to find winding streets and narrow alleys where children play tag, teenagers listen to rap music, and families live and work and play in harmony. And so they might not have much to live on, but they do make the most out of their time 
And what may surprise you the most is that there are only about six families within the entire place. They're technically all related. Talk about keeping it all in the family, right? <laughs> the homes are passed down through each of the families because they literally have nowhere to go but up. I mean, if a family is in need of space in their home, they have to build another floor onto their house. And while it may sound nuts to some of you, there's one last thing to be noted. There's no crime here. Everyone knows everybody, and they have made this one of the most peaceful places on Earth. They even work together to save sea turtles. So what may be the strangest thing here is that we could learn a whole lot from this cramped little island. Number 16. Shani, Shingapur, India Given how vast that India is, it would honestly be a little bit weird that there wasn't a strange small town somewhere in it. After all, there's over a billion people that live in India, so there's gotta be at least one small strange community or even two, right? That's where this place comes in, one that's so strange because of how safe that they feel. But what exactly does that mean? Well, the last two places felt safe because of how tight-knit that their community was and how everyone knows each other. But for this place, they have a belief that their god, Lord Shani, is watching over the village and protects them each and every day. To that end, they have no doors on their houses, no locks on their stores, and everyone is free to come in and out whenever they please. That's a whole lot of faith, which a lot of people will find strange. The irony grows even stronger when you hear that there are 40,000 people a day coming into the village to see the temple that honors the Lord Shani, and how there are plenty of new buildings that have been made over the last two decades that are quite modern, yet in order to honor the village's beliefs, they don't have true doors or locks. The only exceptions are when things like curtains or wooden boards are put in doorways for privacy's sake or to keep out a stray dog. Some are trying to challenge this tradition, while others are trying to keep it enforced. Number 15. Mooresville, USA Now, it was only a matter of time before the United States showed, and why shouldn't it? I mean, it's a country that has tried to modernize the idea of small-town life, and there are plenty of them all over the country. Some of them are bound to be strange, and our first entry from this country takes us to Alabama. And so, why does this place make it to the list? Well, if you look at the latest census data, there are only about 53 people that live there. For context, when the previous census took place, they had 59, which is not a whole lot of growth, even backwards perhaps. Despite the small size, it does have a nice history, which includes being one of the oldest places in the entire state, as it was made in 1818 when Alabama wasn't even a place yet. At one point in time, it used to be a big cotton town, However, an infestation would cause that to stop dead in its tracks. While the population is really small, it's a rather historic town that is maintained by its residents, and that's something that you can hang your hat on. Number 14. Jerome, USA Now I'm going to stick with the United States for a moment to go from Alabama to Arizona, which makes me wonder if the other letters in the alphabet will get a chance to be blasted for their strangeness. Looks like we'll soon find out. Anyways, what makes Jerome a little bit strange is a multi-layered kind of thing. First off, it's 1,500 meters above sea level, which is really high up. There aren't a whole lot of towns, let alone cities, that would even dare to go for such heights. The reason that it was built up that high was because of the local copper mines, which was its main source of income for many years. However, after those had all dried up, it then became a ghost town which is the other reason that it makes this list. These days, you'll only go there to see some of the places from the olden times that are still there and are maintained by over 400 people who currently live there now. At its peak, there were over 10,000 in Jerome, showing just how much of an exodus there was after the big boom had stopped. Number 13. Stikasholmer, Iceland now, if you would prefer a great amount of simple living in a place that's really hard to pronounce, and I probably pronounced incorrectly, then this is where you should go. It's on the northern part of the country of Iceland. The place only has around a thousand people, and is seen as a throwback to pre-modern times due to the things that they both do and do not have. They're known as a service and cultural center that can attract quite a few tourists, 
and one could argue that the true strangeness of the place is how absolutely gorgeous it is in certain parts. It's close to many natural formations and areas that'll leave you breathless and make you wonder why we would even ever want to go away from having a place like this. Because humanity cannot have anything nice. That's why. Number 12. Yuskar, Spain now I'm going to plant my flag right here and say that I think that this place is easily one of the strangest that you've seen so far. I mean, it's a literal blue village. You can find it in Spain, and the reason for its blue nature was because of a publicity stunt for a movie. Can you guess which movie? That's right, it was the Smurfs. When they were doing their film in 2011, the city painted its entire village blue to become the home of the Smurfs to plug the film. It's clever, I will give them that. But when the movie was gone and the hype died down, the village just kept the blue color and kept naming it Smurf Village, eventually becoming the Blue Village due to disputes with the Smurfs' trademark owners. Now, they do use their incredibly blue visuals to lure in tourism in order to get people to come and check out the village, and it does work. A zip wire operates as part of an adventure route of the village, including climbing walls and other jumps, and because we all remember those episodes of the Smurfs when they went down the zip lines to get rid of Gargamel, right? Now I'm not judging, and I do love the color blue, but this is definitely quite the choice, and uh, it's simply time to move on. Number 11. Monowi, United States now, I'm not trying to do most of the entries about the United States, but you'll understand quite quickly why Monowi in Nebraska has made the list. Simply put, as already highlighted, small towns that have small populations have them for one reason or another. But this one has a population of exactly one. And to be clear, that person does still live in Monowi as of 2023. That is a national record because when you think of a small town, you would think of at least a couple dozen, if not a hundred people, and not just one singular person. The woman that lives there is Elsie Eiler, who has ran the town of Monowi for about 50 years, because she's the mayor. Now, there used to be a second resident there, which was actually her husband, but he passed away in 2004, and she's been living there alone ever since. Equally as strange is that the Census Bureau's computer was so put off by the fact that she had lived there alone, it actually unintentionally created another resident to try and protect her identity, which is quite interesting, I would say. Number 10. Hallstatt, China Given China's history in both historical and modern times, it is not a surprise that they have a weird village or two. But when it comes to Hallstatt, China, their weirdness is solely based on its title of World's First Cloned Village. Now I'll give you a minute to ponder what that might mean. No, I don't mean that the people are clones of other Chinese citizens. I mean that the people who built the city cloned the Austrian village of Hallstatt down to the letter. Well, metaphorically speaking. The mining company that built this place recreated several of the buildings and landmarks of the Austrian village in a wealthy housing district for those who wanted to have that European style of living without having to actually go to Europe. That's kind of nuts, and yet China has been doing this kind of cloning for various things in recent years. Number 9. Auroraville, India Now we're back in India for another weird place known as Auroraville. It was built to be a special kind of unifying town that would bring in all sorts of people together for the progress of humanity towards its splendid future by bringing together people of goodwill and aspiration for a better world. That's a whole lot of words. I don't have the time to break it all down for you, but what I can say is that this place was at one time governed by a body outside of the Indian government and doesn't even have the standard currency that you would expect. And when the place was created in 1968, it would be dubbed that it belonged to no one person, but to humanity as a whole. That's nice to know. That means we all own it. We should all go there now. It does still exist today, but it's not exactly the great herald for the future that they had likely hoped that it would be. Number 8. Thamestown, China 
Now we're back in China, I've already showed you one attempt at them cloning Austria, and now I'm showing you one that they made to clone the UK via Thamestown. It has everything you would expect from a British city, which includes pubs, cobbled streets, Victorian terraces, corner shops, and red telephone boxes. No, those boxes don't come with a doctor, and we should all be grateful for that. So why exactly was this place even built in the first place? Well, not unlike the last town from China, it was meant to lure in people to live there so that they wouldn't live in other Chinese cities. In this case, Shanghai. Did the plan work? Well, not really. Only the wealthy really bought homes there, and they only use them as second home locations, and so if you go there now, it just kind of sits pretty empty. Number 7. Hoover PD, Australia This is a small town that I have been waiting to talk about because it pops up a lot in our videos. We're going down under where we will be in Australia. But when it comes to Coober PD, the town isn't exactly strange because of its people, but because of where the people actually live. You see, the area was once ripe with opals when they started digging around. The problem was that it was so hot to live there that they realized they would be much cooler in the literal sense to sleep and live inside the caves. And so that's what they did. Pretty much the entire population lives in underground cave homes, and it is a real thing. They've made an entire life within those caves, and you can actually rent out hotel space inside of them as well. What a world we live in. Number 6. Kakuna Date, Japan Honestly, I believe the next place is pretty cool and not at all strange. But to those who look at modern Japan, this village may seem to be one that is just a little bit out of date. The reason for this is that the village is known for the samurai homes that are still there and intact. That's right, homes from feudal Japan that once housed former samurai are still there and they're being lived in. These houses and the surrounding area have not been touched or changed in about 400 years. Talk about the great preservation of history. Another highlight of the village are the many cherry blossom trees that are all around. It's actually one of the most popular places to see these trees in bloom in the entirety of the country. And as you can imagine, they do bank on the trees and the whole samurai aesthetic to bring in visitors. But honestly, it wouldn't take a whole lot for me to go there and absorb all the history that's around. Because samurais are cool. Number 5. Bannock, United States We've been to the United States many times now in this video, and one of those times was to show you a ghost town. Well, in Bannock, Montana, you will find another ghost town, and probably one that is in the literal sense. This place was once a gold town that had struck it rich, and then went up in smoke, so to speak. When everything dried up, it was even one of the capitals of Montana once upon a time. Fast forward to the modern days and there have been various events that have been said to go down there that make people wonder if the ghosts of the past really do live there still. It was apparently a rough place to be in during the gold rush. But even if you do not believe in ghosts, there are plenty of activities to find there, which includes a state park along with some other novelties. Number 4. Scottsboro, United States Now we're back in Alabama, specifically the town of Scottsboro, which is known as the lost luggage capital of the world. It's not a joke, nor is it exactly what you think. You see, the town has the unclaimed baggage center, which is full of lost luggage. They buy the luggage that's unclaimed by the airlines, and then they sell it off for a profit. Items like clothing and jewelry, even ski gear, are all available at the store that's there. The bags are bought, sight unseen, and can contain anything. Sometimes there's nothing more than only a few articles of clothing. However, the company said that they once found diamond rings and even a full-blown suit of armor. I'm at a loss for words, so I'm just going to move on and hope that things get better from here. Number 3. Alma, United States now we're going to Arkansas, specifically the small town of Alma, which has dubbed itself the spinach capital of the world. They wanted something to put themselves on the map, and so they came up with this moniker. But then Texas began to argue the point and went full tilt, 
to ensure that they got that title, which included making the world's largest spinach can, complete with Popeye art. And that held a world record for spinach that it contained. Number 2. Dudley Town, United States Here we have a supposed cursed town that's known as Dudley Town in Connecticut. And what made the place cursed? Well, allegedly, the Dudley brought a curse to the New World, and it led to a series of disappearances, deaths, and mental illnesses that plagued the town for quite some time. Eventually, it became a hot spot for ghost hunters to try and find out if the curse was actually real. And while the curse element has been debunked, the history records don't lie, and a ton of strange things have happened there, which is why Dudley Town was nicknamed the Village of the Damned. Number 1. Lilydale, United States Now we're heading to New York State, a place that is strange in many ways. Specifically, we're going to Lilydale, which has been dubbed Woodstock for spiritualists. Today, it's a community of over 160 residences, a couple of hotels, some guest houses, bookstores, cafes, and even a museum. And all throughout the summer, visitors can attend events that range from medium demonstrations to religious services and workshops. But the main reason that people would ever come into this town is to get a medium reading, and over 20,000 people a year come there to do that. Well, that's all from the realm of small towns and why some of them are quite strange for one reason or another? Does hearing about these small towns make you glad that you don't live in one? Or perhaps it entices you to see if there is such a place near you? Perhaps there's another small town that could have fit well on this list. Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. You should also check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.